I was born in Jamaica, mm -hmm. a little district called Thompson Hill in Hanover. And um, could you could you tell me uh, you know some of your earliest um, experiences um, in Jamaica? Uh, well, yes, my my mother had um, five of us. Mm -hmm. The two first one died, leaving three. Before, after the death, now I am this. I would be the fourth one, mm -hmm. but I come the the, the second. Mm -hmm. oh. you, you get me now yeah. because the two first one died. Okay. You see, okay. well, um, my brother, mm -hmm. that is the eldest brother. <coughs> he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. He um, was a Sunday school teacher. Mm -hmm. He was a tailor. He was an organist pray for the church. What, what religious denomination? Um, Baptist. Okay. I myself mm -hmm. was a visitor to the Baptist church, mm -hmm. but I visit other churches. I take part in several, several um, things. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a, I learned carpentry. I become a carpenter, mm -hmm. and I work in Westmoreland, mm -hmm. um, St. Elizabeth, and in Montego Bay. And um, so you 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 um, you traveled around. Yes. Yes. Mm. Well, what about uh, your? Uh, what about uh, before uh, you go to that? What about your your childhood? Your, your who influenced you the most? You know who? who, who um, my father, my mother and my father, mm. see, and um, other relatives. Mm. What were they like? Very good. Mm. In what way? Um, you could go to them and relate to them. Mm -hmm. You could talk with them mm -hmm. and they would tell you um, mm -hmm. anything that, you know, and if you was doing anything, um, naughty and see them coming. Mm -hmm. They either run or hide or shut up. Mm -hmm. See. So they were, were, were they were strict. They were strict. Mm -hmm. See. But they were good. They were good. good parents, yeah. And um those days if you was walking on the street with a girl and you see any of them coming, although you were not friends, just social Either you stop back and make she goes before or she goes before and you stop back. But you couldn't walk um with her past them. Mm -hmm. You mean you couldn't you couldn't um you seem to be <coughs> a relationship. It wasn't it wasn't a relationship, mm -hmm. you see. But it it's a, I think it's the respect. See? Because um Relationship was a way beyond, you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was the way it was brought up. Mm -hmm. so someone was saying that also that uh, sometimes, like your marriage was uh, seemingly like it was arranged. It was arranged. No, our marriage wasn't arranged. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. no, um, we did not. Um, well, well, as a matter of fact. When I left Jamaica, I left out my mom's home and come straight to England. Mm -hmm. And during my yeah. hmm? yeah. 1956, mm -hmm. and during my um, childhood days to um, boyhood, mm -hmm. turning into manhood, I was still living with my parents under their roof. My mom used to do all my buying, for her, buy my clothes and so forth. And it's only when I leave Jamaica and come to England, I am responsible of buying things for myself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was my parents. You, you said that you worked, you worked. Yes. What sort of work did you do? I do um, um, carpentry. Carpentry. And um, plant my little um, 
um, you're a farmer as farmer well. in farming you know yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah. most that that's all we do mm -hmm. I do yeah when and when why and when um, okay we know when you you came here mm -hmm. but why did you decide to leave Jamaica and come to um, England? well um, my brother which is my, my youngest brother he came over here in the rough. I tried it myself, but I wasn't successful. See, because at the time, um, if your if your um, teeth was bad, you couldn't get uh, the 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 um, they wouldn't pass you. See, and a lot of us in Jamaica suffer with them um, bad tooth, so you have to take years to decay. So you'd have to take them out and um, put them in, and um, it was a bit expensive to do all those things because um, those days money wasn't fluent in the country, and so we just have to live by our means, see, and don't create any extra, um, you know, and that's what expense. Yeah, expense. Um you you decided that you wanted to come that way, uh, and how, but how did you come in the end? Uh, my brother came over here in the rough, mm -hmm. and um, which is still in England. Mm -hmm. And um, after he wrote and asked if I wanted to come, mm -hmm. see, being Jamaica wasn't that. Uh, fruitful mm -hmm. where money wa uh, money wise you know so we'll, we'll try mm -hmm. something and else economically eco 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 yes you yes, see yes. because in Jamaica sometimes you get a little job and it lasts for six months and then uh, for another year and six months you don't get another job so it was really really hard see and um, my brother wrote and asked me if I wanted to come. And I said yes. He said that remember, England is not a bed of roses. So don't expect to come and find him um, rosier. Anyway, I said, well, all right. I don't matter about that. I wanted to try the waters, so I come. He paid, at that time, the fare was um, 75 pounds and the, um, <coughs> and the boat and 90 pounds and the plane. So I, um, he booked my money, and um, plane or boat? Which one? I came on the boat, the Erpinia. Okay. That was the name of the boat. Erpinia. The Erpinia, yes. Mm -hmm. Leaving Jamaica, it takes about twenty-eight days. We stopped in um, Spain. And we leave Spain, and then we come straight to England. Mm -hmm. When I came to England, my brother was living at um, Seven George Road in Cosley. And um, we went there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was stopping with my brother for a while. Mm -hmm. and How then did you find I know that other people find it very difficult to get accommodation. You experienced something a little different because you had someone here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I stopped with my brother. Mm -hmm. See. And yeah. how, how did you find it with other people? What um, at that time, finding accommodation. Accommodation at that time was very um, limited. Mm -hmm. After leaving, um, during that time. Mm -hmm. 
that is it. Ten days after I come in this country, I got a job by British Rail. And I started as an um, examiner. No. And then, uh, no, sir, I make a mistake there. I, I started as a work, um, work and repair assistant, see, that is, um, those days you have um, freight liners and um, those things, you know, and I was an assistant work and repair mm -hmm. at Herbert Street. I used to travel from Cowsley, that was where my brother lived, to Wolverhampton and Herbert Street by train comes off at um, um, low level station okay. and walk from low level station up to Herbert Street. If I if the train was late, I was late. And I could remember one morning um I was late getting to work and um the Clark asked me why I'm late. And I turned to him and say, You know, I don't walk from Cozy to, to here. I come by the train. So if the train is late, I'm supposed to late. <laughs> he, he, he never say he never say anything. <laughs> yes, yes. He never say anything. Yeah. But um what a I know that many people coming from the in, um, West Indies um, had a lot of um, unskilled jobs, jobs that, you know, maybe the indigenous um, people living here might not have wanted to do. But you seem to have landed yourself a, a decent job, really. Yes. You, what's, what were your educational background before you came? Um, well, the education is like... Um, um, they call it comprehensive mm -hmm. education, yeah, mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you did actually go through school? Yes, through yes, school. yes. And you, what about you? You had a few skills? Um, or, or have you developed them? I, <coughs> I can do a bit of tailoring. Mm -hmm. I'm a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And I can do a bit of shoemaking, a shoemaker. That's what we call it in Jamaica. See? And then... Um, that's... A, uh, I can do a bit of cabinet making, too. Mm -hmm. And all those skills were, were, were um, sort of um, um, achieved? In Jamaica. In Jamaica. Yes, yes. Yeah, what about here? Did you improve on anything? No, I did not improve on anything since I came here. Mm. See, I um, came here the 26th of November, 56, mm -hmm. and 10 days after I got a job on British Rail. Mm -hmm. And um, after sp spending some time, with, after spending um, or not, on British Rail, then <coughs> what happens? I go, I was doing, the, as I mentioned already, doing the carriage and wagon repair. And then the vacancy comes up from an um, examiner. See? But those days, they call him the wheel topper. You know, we walk with a little uh, um, hammer, with on a long stick. And as we go and examine the train, we um, knock the, um, the wheel to find out if it's, you know. And um, after working at Herbert Street, from Herbert Street to Low Level Station, from Low Level Station, to um, Oxley and um, and that was when now I started um, the vacancy comes out for um, the examining job 
So I took a um, 13 weeks course. Mm -hmm. See? Yes, yes. And I went to Swindon okay. after um, doing that 13 weeks course. I went to Swindon for two weeks mm -hmm. at the main um, carriage and wagon um, where they build all the trains and so forth. And I spent two weeks there yeah. in board and lodging. Mm -hmm. The um, company that is British Rail pay for that. And on the Thursday, after the two weeks, the Thursday I went for my final um, test. Because when I went to Swindon, it's a big, everlasting place with all the trains. That's where they build them. That's where they do everything on the trains. So you got to go. You got, you, you got to go from one um, end to the other, and you know. And after, um, after you do that, now you went into the um, office, and the examiner asked you certain questions, and you answer them. Sometimes um, he got a book just like how oh, you have your own there now, and they. Um, they do the um, theory, mm -hmm. and we do the practical. Cause we do the work, and they just put it and they put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you give them the um, the tools to do the job, mm -hmm. some of them would know what to do. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. and um, well, after so. eh? therefore after um, going to to all those, and um, you say all right. Yeah, yeah, been successful. You pass out, okay. and they, they phoned back to my depot in Wolverhampton, and they told them that I passed out. So they know, they know before I come back to Wolverhampton, okay. and um, that I'm an examiner now, mm -hmm. and I work at. Um, Um, should I say that Be before I go through all those, mm -hmm. when during the time when I was um, training to be an examiner, I was sent from her um, low level station to Oxley. And while I was at Oxley training, I was one, um, I was the only um, black man there at the time. And the other men, them, or the Englishmen, they, they, they put a pe petition up not to train me. And so I've been there days and days, and nobody tell me anything. I was like um, a wanderer. Just sit down all day until my time come to go to see, and I reported it to my gaffer, and they said that they will um, investigate. Well, they did. They did investigate, and um, it saw up that I was there too long after. And I was moved from there, and I go um, back to Herbert Street. And then I leave from Herbert Street. After passing out now, that is all I've passed out to see. Then I pass out now. And um, I went to Bill. I was at Billston. Bilston West, Bilston Central, and then um, the other one, the other two. Um, anyway, then Dudley and Blois Green. Those are the only stations that I got to to cover. 
But during those time, I had um, I have left my brother home and was living into a um, room, which it was about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of us in that one room. See. Sharing one bed. Sharing <laughs> him. <laughs> we had a bed there, you know, but to go to my bed, you got to climb over the next person's bed to go to mine because there was no other. Um, the. Wasn't walkway. No, there wasn't. Um, the, the walkway was, wasn't convenient, you, you know, because it was so packed and crammed that you didn't have a walkway. And um, that was the way in which, you know, um, yeah. we suffered when they came here. What about women? Did you think, what sort of experience do you think that the Afro-Caribbean uh, women, and, or in your case, in Jamaican women experience, was it different from yours or, or um, similar? Well, um, those days, I think three quarters of the women, um, I don't know much about the women, you know, but um, some of them had a um, similar um, experience mm -hmm. because after a while, there are some of the women that came by their um, male, male friend, you see, your relative, mm -hmm. you see, husband. and husband, you see. And also, as the husband them go through similar, um, you know. Do you think that the women were um, actually improved their education on entering this country, or do you think it was it was relatively the same as men? I think um, I think they improve. Okay. See, mm -hmm. because in what, way? Uh, hmm? in what way? Well. Um, I think experience can um, can change you a lot, you know, and I think um, some go to college and um, others just remain, you know. Mm -hmm. You think they had more opportunities? Yes, there was more oppor there was more opportunities mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but it was hard for us to get it because um, it was a kind of, um, should I use the word racism or, yes, it was kind of racist and then um, by, um, we as black people wasn't much accepted in the community, see, because and at one um, occasion, I went into a pub to have a drink. And while I was standing at the bar, minding my own business, just having my drink, I was approached by a white man, ready to fight me. See, I'm looking at his missus, of which I don't know his missus, I don't know. See, I was just having a quiet drink. Do you, do you think that they saw you as a life threat? Yes. To their way of life? Uh, well, I, I got to say yes, you know. Mm -hmm. And then um, another one come up and say, but he's not doing anything, he's only having a drink, leave him alone. And then, you know, mm -hmm. and I just make case, drink up my drink and went. Mm -hmm. Another occasion, mm -hmm. I was having a drink again in the same um, Bilston, and um, while I was standing there, um, somebody comes behind me, a white man comes behind me, or an Englishman comes behind me, and thumped me for no apparent reason. So, see? And um, again, it was somebody else that stepped in and said, well, the bloke hasn't been um, doing anything, he's just having a, a quiet drink. And um, I find it um, a bit embarrassing, you know. Mm 
you didn't know what to do. And then I went back home. Mm -hmm. And then I don't, I how, did. How do you think, um, um, from, you know, the late 50s to, to 60s, how do you think it compared to the experiences of, you know, our Afro-Caribbean young people today? Or has it changed? Is it remained the same? I think for what we have experienced in those days mm. and to what I've seen today, mm. I think most young people, would I call it, um, do things not 100 percent, you know, but they are living in a better atmosphere than when we came here. Mm -hmm. See. Because in the 50s and 60s, when we came here, as I say, it was hard to get accommodation. The white man wouldn't rent you a room. Because, so, I was um, working for British Rail and I was at Stuart and Lyde. I used to go into Stuart and Lyde, where you get the wagon goes in. You examine them when they goes in. And after they goes in, it goes in loaded, and after the load was empty, they come back out empty. So you got to examine them in and out. And Stuart and Lyde had a checker, and we were talking one day. And he said to me that he's not against um, black people. I said, are you sure? He said, no. He's not against black people because he work with them. I say, that's not it. You work with them because you don't have any other choice. I say, if you, are not a, if you are not against black people, suppose I come to you tonight and say, I don't have anywhere to sleep. Would you put me up in your home? He said, no. And I say, well, there is it. See, because you, you will be claiming now that you as a white person and a black person shouldn't be on the same, under the same roof, see? And I say, well, what he's telling me is far different from what I have experienced, see? And so it goes on right through the 60s, right up to um, the 80s when things changing a bit. And another occasion, at that time I was living at 3 Leicester Street at my brother's home. Because he came here in the rough. You see, he, he came here from, he was 16 years of age. And for him to come, he had was to tell lies to come to the country. Because when they asked him, he was pretty young. And when they asked him for his um, birth certificate, he told them that the last storm, storm that blows, it blows the roof of the house off and all the papers, you see, went missing. So he didn't have any papers. And that is, that's the way he get to come to, um, to England. So he, you're really, he, he actually said he was older than he was? Yes, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the, 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 you know, mm -hmm. the age that he gave him, mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. it, it, they say he was younger, you know, but mm -hmm. they didn't have any proof, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. So he came here, mm -hmm. and then from ever since, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. still in this country. Yeah. Was, it a, was it a good experience, the, with the transition from, from the West Indies to here? Was it a good experience? Would you consider it a good experience? Or an experience. <laughs> um, it was good because you could see. I mean, if you um, if, if, when you travel, you can see how the other half live. Mm -hmm. See, and um, seeing um, in my early days, from school days, seeing a lot of um, foreigners come into the country, you know, and the way how um, our people adore them and you say well if if you know it must be um wonderful to come in england 
or to travel. But when we come here, it was different. The atmosphere was, you know, you couldn't, if you, those days, if you see, if you was going out the street, you know, and you don't know um, an address or a street, and you saw a young person, uh, an English person, um, going and it, you can call to them. If you call to them, they run. You see? Because, I, I mean, I, you call to them and they run. And they say, I mean... And that was it. So you didn't have that um, kind of communication, you see? I, they, they, I don't know if it, if it is the, um, the color of your skin that caused them to be like that. Because um, I was told that one, uh, um, one woman says her parents told her that black people are monkeys. See? So when they see black people come in this country, they were a bit scared. But after a while, they say, but mom says they are monkey, but monkey is not like that. You see? So that's where they are. Um, so you think it was a bit of ignorance? So yes, it was ignorance. Yes, it was yeah. ignorance. Mm. You see? Mm. And another occasion, I happened to, I have a, um, Cousin of mine involved in a um, court case. There was this girl, she was um, about 15 years of age. But she looked older and she was going around um, sleeping with men, giving a different age. It's so happened that a cousin of mine involved and he was being arrested. And during the, um, those days, he was tried at Stafford Crown Court. And while we was there, that, uh, there was a policeman talking. And he did not know that um, the person was connected to me. And he said, if we, Jamaican, think that the English uh, magistrate, our judge, going to believe us and leave them, we had a big they had a big mistake. They will believe them and disbelieve us. And from that, I put it in my head. I never trust them. See? Although I talk with them, but... Um, so you think the legal system... Do you, um, how it's, do you it it changed a lot. It's changed. It's a, mm -hmm. And um, do you, uh, I could remember on an on occasion, traveling from Leicester Street um, to Kenok Road, There was, um, I got to travel um, four o'clock in the morning to steam rise a train, the train them going out, the pensions. And I could remember on several occasions going from Leicester Street up to the roundabout there and go across. I always see a policeman in that morning. And he asked me, where am I going? I tell him I'm going to work. He doubted me. And he followed me straight to my workplace. And when he see I turned down there, he turns back. On another occasion, I met him again. And when I met him, he talked to me this time and said, well, I believe you. I don't need to ask you where you're going now because I see where you're going. And then from so that, you no, I wasn't trusted. Mm -hmm. And until now, I mean, they have that mm -hmm. 
kind of feeling that suspicion. Um, suspicion. Mm. You see? Mm -hmm. When I came here first um, and get the job, and I, um, as I say, 10 days after I come in this country, I get a job. So right now, the system holds me for some, um, what they call it, um, 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 social, um, some money from the, um, when you sign on and the uh, social security, so see. But anyway, um, on those days, your wages was um, seven pound, eight and six. 48 hours. And when you... Even as a, um, an inspector? Hmm? Even as an inspector? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Seven pound eight and six. And when you work from Saturday to Sunday, um, you might be able to go home with about 10 pounds for all those hours that you puts in, in ten Labor pounds. Was cheap. Labor was cheap. Anyway we survived it. Yes. Because um the cost of living was very um you know cheap those days, you know. Um you were you were saying how much um you know you think you've been old you've been old but um how um how do you think you've helped to build this build this country? What have you contributed to build the country? Or Wolverhampton? Well, I, I think I have contributed a lot, you know, because um, both social, because as I say, I haven't got, um, I work from I come here, and therefore um, I've I got to say pay for my keeps. See, because I haven't got any um anything from the state to say, well, um, I'm one of the scroungers that come into because they call us scroungers, you see. So from I came came I started to work. And thankful I work I got a job on British Rail. And I work with British Rail until I retired on British Rail. So I haven't had any experience of working anywhere else, see? And, and um, British Rail, um, the job was hard because um, it was outdoor working. Summer, um, winter, and the, um, the three seasons, the four seasons of the year, Spring, summer, autumn, winter, you got to work outside, see? And um, during those days, um, <laughs> there are many things that... During those days, um, when you come, when you're out there, you got to lie down in the snow because being a, um, working on the train, you got to repair them. So, and you're going to, you have to examine them. <clears throat> you got to change them, um, brake blocks, like, um, you know, when the train, as a matter of fact, the train that runs there now, I can tell you, might not remember all of it now, but I can tell you every part that made up the train, because I got to examine it. When a bolt is missing, when a bolt is um, worn, or when a nut is missing, you got to know. And um, you got to know what and what to, um, this, when you go into the stores, you got to know what to order and how to fit it. See? And the, the responsibility um, was very, very strict because when we examine a train and pass that train fit, you are responsible for it until it goes to a certain distance. 
see, beyond, uh, beyond Birmingham, you see, you can be responsible for it too. It depends. So, from here to Birmingham, you would be responsible. You're responsible for, for it, you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, because we were being um, registered with the Ministry mm -hmm. of Transport, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it was very, very. So really, your job was very important. Very important. Yeah, you yeah. see. And we've heard a lot about your um, working life. What about your private life? Um, were you married mm -hmm. or? Yes, I um I married and then um it last I married I got married and then um, after a while um it went apart. Mm -hmm. it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And then um I um spent that was in seventy eight. 78. Have you had children? I had three children with my first wife. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Two boys and a girl. Mm -hmm. Thankful they are doing well. Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are they doing? Um, the, my first boy, mm -hmm. he is a um, youth training officer, works in Birmingham. Um, the girl, she works for the local authority in London. She's living in London. She do um, typing and, and those things. Well, my last boy, he is um, a manager at a factory in um, Great Bar. And they all bought their own home, uh, their family, so they are very happy. And um, I see them; mm -hmm. they, they they don't leave me out. Yeah, I see. So, so coming here actually improve might not have improved things for you so much, but have improved things for your children. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, and your siblings, you you've heard about your siblings. They, you talk about your first marriage. Were you married again after that? Yes, I married again, uh, and it never, it never worked out either, because uh, I married in um, well from 1978. Me and my first wife, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. parted or divorced then, mm -hmm. but um, we still, mm -hmm. we, we still good friends. Because if she's sick there you now, I can I can phone her from here you now and say you know, leave something for me and she still leave it. We are not that uh, an an enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, my second wife. Um, we knew each other from school days. We we went to the same school church, and we say we were a little. Um, friends back home. Well, I come to England and um, after coming to England, um, she went to America. And for 25 years, I never see her. I never hear anything from her. And um, fortunately, our, um, I met her sister and was talking about her and then she told me she gave me her telephone number and I phoned her and um, we started to talk and um, being I was single you know and she was single you know um, they say um, old fire stick easy to catch and so we started to um, talk to one another on the phone until we decided and she came here and she spent about two weeks and then she went back. She came back again and we arranged um, to get married. Well, we were married on the 21st of September 1996. She went back to America. Mm -hmm. She went back to America um, 
97 February. So we were together about, after we married, we were together about five months. Then she went back to America and she spent six months in America. And after she come back from America, she was a changed person. She never have her stay yet. And she, um, so, she was doing things that it wasn't to my approval and you couldn't talk to her. And say, well, all right, if that is your intention, I stop the, the uh, horse before I go through the gate. Mm -hmm. And so I file divorce against her. Mm -hmm. No, I, I've, um, I stop her stay first. And if I stop in her stay, I file divorce. Mm -hmm. And after when she f realized that all those hell let loose, and I was abused left, right, and center. See? Do you think you, you, um, you reacted too quickly? No. Mm. So no. There really are certain things that I would not divulge. You understand yes. me? You see? You, you, you see? Yes. So, uh, and um, mm -hmm. after, I, they, after she realized that, you know, because as far as I understand, she was after, you see, they believe I did have money. And it was after my money. You see? And not getting it. Because I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. You see? She changed. Yeah. Anyway, I, um, I don't know what, I don't know what has become of her. You see? Because uh, whether she going back to America, or she's here, I don't know. But since that I got married again, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. Well, um, happily, um, you for, the for the third time. Well, at the moment, um, I can't complain. I'm happily married at the moment, you see? So I don't know for tomorrow. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so you're, and, um, mm -hmm. but really at the end, your, your private life has been successful.